Hi, I'm Dr. David Dobson. Welcome to Conversations. Today, my guest is Dr. Alvin Boai Bell. Alvin is an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at Las at La Stoll School of Engineering, York University. She holds a PhD in software engineering from University of Quebec. Alvin's research interests include equity, diversity, inclusion in computing education. Today, we will discuss her recently published journal article in ACM Transaction on Computing Education, bolstering the persistence of Black students in undergraduate computer science programs, a systematic mapping study. It's a great pleasure to have you with me today, Alvin. Likewise, uh, thank you so much for inviting me today and for giving me the opportunity to talk about my uh, research. What inspired you to write this article? Um, before I talk about the inspiration, I would like to start by thanking the, the co-authors of the article. So I would like to warmly thank uh, Dr. Callum Sutherland, who worked as a postdoctoral researcher in uh, my research lab when writing the article. And uh, I would also like uh, to uh, thank Dr. Opiemi Adizina, who works as an assistant professor in uh, computer science at the University of Fraser Valley. And uh, I also warmly thank uh, Dr. Segla Ojedo, who works as an associate professor of computer science at the Ecole des Technologies Supérieures, that is part of uh, the University of Quebec. I would also like to thank Dr. Nathanael Ojong, who works who works as uh, an assistant professor of uh, international development studies at York University. And finally, I would like to thank uh, Lisa Cole, the director of uh, the Kindergarten to Industry Academy. Um, the latter is an organization of uh, York University, and that organization works with youth and the students from kindergarten to industry to dismantle systemic barriers for students in STEM. So our motivation to write the article lies in the fact that in computing programs and professions, and uh, more generally in STEM fields, the underrepresentation of marginalized people is often framed in terms of uh, a metaphorical leaky pipeline. Um, according to this metaphor, uh, racialized and gendered students are more likely than other students from dominant groups to leak out of uh, the STEM pipeline. And um, these racialized and gendered students are especially prone on this view to opt out of classes, which serve as prerequisites to degrees and careers in STEM. And uh, this metaphor is problematic. Um, however, because it implies that uh, marginalized students often passively leak out of the pipeline rather than being actively filtered out of the scene. And this metaphor also elides the existence of systemic inequities, thereby lending itself to deficit-based understandings of uh, inequitable educational processes. When viewed from a deficit lens, um, racialized and gendered students are underrepresented in STEM, not because of systemic inequities, racial injustices, or uh, cultures of exclusion, but because they are deficient as people and uh, students. And effect, in effect, uh, this amounts to systemic victim blaming. So the significance of our study in light of uh, the context I just mentioned should be understood in terms of uh, justice. And uh, the rationale is that people who are racialized, uh, gendered, or otherwise minoritized, um, the lack of that, the rationale is that for people who are uh, racialized, gendered, or otherwise minoritized, the lack of diversity in uh, computing professions mm -hmm. can have significant uh, consequences. Mm -hmm. For instance, as authors such as Safiya Noble noted, the lack of diversity in computing means that algorithms are liable to reinforce negative stereotypes associated with racialized or gendered peoples. Um, Similarly, uh, Algorithmic Justice League founder Joy Ola Mwini has eliminated the gender and uh, race-based biases embedded in facial recognition software. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, as uh, Yolanda Rankin and Kayala um, Henderson have shown, famous speech-based interfaces and digital assistants are designed in a manner that uh, perpetuates anti-Black racism. Mm -hmm. 
In effect, as uh, who have been channeling argues in uh, the context of algorithmic computations of uh, health risk, digital technologies are increasingly automating racism, and this is sometimes a matter of life and death. Simply put, the underrepresentation of Black people in computing professions has significant real world consequences for Black communities in North America and beyond, and even for the development of future technologies. And accordingly, uh, my co authors and I therefore positions or systematic uh, mapping study as a justice centered intervention, which tries to contribute to efforts to bolster uh, Black students' ability to persist and thrive in computing programs and professions. Mm -hmm. And it is important to know that despite the specificity of uh, the issues I just mentioned, teachers often learn back uh, Black students together with uh, students from underrepresented backgrounds more generally. Mm -hmm. And similarly, uh, researchers sometimes group uh, Black women together with women of color more generally. Mm -hmm. and. This can obscure the particular effects of uh, intersectionality on the experiences of Black women in computing. Okay. Furthermore, thus some studies engage uh, specifically with Black students in computing programs. Researchers often learn back uh, these uh, participants together with uh, Black students in related STEM programs, such as engineering. Mm -hmm. and my co-authors and I therefore believe it is important to attend to the particularities of uh, computing programs and provisions. And though some uh, researchers have focused specifically on Black students in computing programs or provisions, mm -hmm. these studies often take uh, a deficit-based uh, approach to framing or addressing the underrepresentation of Black people in computing. Deficit-based studies are particularly problematic because they focus on the supposed deficiencies of underrepresented students to the exclusion of systemic factors. This means that deficit-based studies are premised on a fundamental misunderstanding of the causes of underrepresentation. Asset-based studies focus, uh, by contrast, on how best to leverage the strengths of uh, marginalized students and your families with uh, a view towards bolstering your persistence in the face of systemic uh, educational inequities. There exists um, a nurture need, in other words, to identify, foreground, and amplify existing asset-based studies engaging principally with uh, Black students in undergraduate computing contests. And uh, the systematic uh, mapping study that my co authors and I wrote therefore endeavors to address this gap uh, in the literature. You use systematic mapping study for your research. Uh, can you share your research methods? Our research are not conducting um, a systematic mapping study that uh, we published at uh, the ACM Transactions in Computing Education Journal. Mm -hmm. Um, so a systematic mapping study is a, a form of a systematic review that does not aim at synthesizing the literature, but rather focuses on categorizing primary studies against a given framework or model to identify the relevant research that uh, has been undertaken in an area and uh, to identify potential gaps in that uh, research area. Okay. Um, and to conduct our systematic mapping study, we mainly relied on um, the PRISMA reporting guideline uh, that has been uh, widely adopted in various areas, including healthcare, social science, education, and uh, computer science. Mm -hmm. And PRISMA stands for preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta analysis. Mm -hmm. And um, we particularly chose to focus on PRISMA because it yields a more concise and transparent reporting than other reporting guidelines. And uh, we use the most uh, recent version of PRISMA, which is the PRISMA 2020. And the uh, PRISMA 2020 results from the consensus of more than 100 uh, systematic uh, review methodologists and journal editors across the world. So in order to uh, conduct our systematic mapping study, uh, we rely on uh, three um, uh, um, 
different reporting guidelines. Mm -hmm. So we rely on the Prisma 2020 guideline mm -hmm. as uh, the main guideline for uh, our work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, complemented the Prisma 2020 reporting guideline with uh, CIGRAS that was proposed by uh, Kitchen Hunt and her quarters. Mm -hmm. And um, CIGRAS is an adaptation of the Prisma 2020 guidelines for secondary research uh, that is conducted in uh, the software engineering fields. And uh, we also complemented uh, the Prisma 2020 reporting guideline with um, the reporting guideline that uh, Peterson and uh, his uh, co-authors have proposed to carry out uh, systematic uh, mapping studies in uh, software engineering. And um, five members of our research team developed and uh, revised the different versions of the protocol we use in our uh, systematic mapping study until the most optimal protocol was uh, defined. Mm -hmm. And um, two members of uh, the team, also uh, two, two co-authors of the papers, also made several checks of each key phase of the study to ensure the protocol was properly followed for good the completion of our study. And to search for studies, we relied on three different search techniques. The database driven search technique, the snowballing uh, search technique, mm -hmm. and the expert driven search technique. And uh, using these three uh, search techniques allowed ensuring the completeness of our search process. And we relied on a set of eligibility criteria to select primary studies relevant for our systematic mapping study. And when completing the selection process, we used the EndNote uh, tool as a reference manager. And after completing the selection process, we ended up with 16 empirical studies, including qualitative, quantitative, and mixed method studies, informed by a range of theoretical frameworks. We then extracted data from these studies and organized that data in uh, a set of categories. And we use um, uh, several tables and charts to report that uh, data in our uh, paper. And uh, we also wrote a synthesis uh, to further explain the extracted data in accordance, in accordance with uh, the set of categories that uh, we have established. So this is uh, an overview of the methodology that uh, we, we use uh, to conduct uh, our, uh, our work, our systematic mapping study. In okay. your article, you mentioned that Black students are underrepresented in undergraduate computer science programs, and particularly Black women. Can you explain why that is? Um, well, um, the underrepresentation of Black students and uh, particularly Black women in yeah. undergraduate computer science programs is notably due to the culture of uh, computing privileges mm -hmm. that is promoted by some uh, dominant groups. Mm -hmm. um, the systemic uh, reproduction of which is uh, obscured by color evasive and meritocratic ideologies and uh, attendance discourses. Yeah. And though this culture is problematic for uh, racialized students from uh, a variety of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. It uh, creates an especially hostile environment for Black students in general and Black women in particular, mm -hmm. whose ongoing uh, experience of systemic anti-Black racism compromises your ability to persist and thrive in computing programs and professions. In addition to having to overcome the exclusionary uh, culture of uh, computing, mm -hmm. Black students must contend with um, several um, uh, additional systemic barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for instance, uh, on average, Black computing uh, students' access to financial resources tends to be more limited than that mm -hmm. of your Black, uh, than that of your non-Black uh, counterparts. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2016, for instance, 31% uh, 30, of Black children in the United States experience poverty compared mm -hmm. to 10% of uh, white children. Mm -hmm. Black students are more likely to attend poorly funded schools. Um, consequently, Black students may have a relatively limited uh, access to technologies, mm -hmm. as well as fewer opportunities for advanced engagements with mm -hmm. uh, computing in uh, formal and uh, informal educational contexts. Yeah. And owing to these uh, systemic issues, um, Black um, 
computing students may also struggle to relate to their non-Black peers and mm -hmm. educators, mm -hmm. resulting in feelings of social or academic isolation. Mm -hmm. Besides, Black women usually feel completely isolated in the mm -hmm. computing fields. Mm -hmm. And based on the data we collected from uh, the primary study, from the primary studies uh, in our sample, mm -hmm. we identified 13 persistence factors that uh, allow bolstering the persistence of Black students mm -hmm. in undergraduate computer science programs. Mm -hmm. And we classified these factors across four categories. Mm -hmm. The first one is the social capital, networking, and support category. The second one is the career and professional development category. Mm -hmm. the, the third one is the pedagogical and programmatic intervention category. Okay. And uh, the fourth um, uh, category is the exposure and access category. So for instance, the persistence factors that fall into the social capital and networking, um, for instance, the persistence factors that fall into the social capital networking and support category are first coping strategies or sacrifices to endure anti-black racism in computing and associated inequities mm -hmm. again uh, engagements with uh, the black uh, campus club uh, with uh, industry academic uh, organizations mm -hmm. and uh, with uh, mentor networks mm -hmm. we also have uh, familial cultivation nurturing and financial supports we also have multifaceted cultural diversity mentoring and uh, support. Mm -hmm. We also have peer and uh, community modeling. And uh, we also have positive computing social socialization and social interactions. Mm -hmm. And the persistence factors that uh, fall into the career and uh, professional development uh, category are uh, first, the internship uh, and the research lab experience. Yeah. Second, the leadership training, and third, mm -hmm. the structured uh, decision-making process for mm -hmm. selecting a computing mm -hmm. career. What are your recommendations to bolster enrollment for Black students in computer science programs? Um, so our data collection process um, uh, allowed us to identify uh, 26 recommendations um, across uh, six stakeholders uh, groups. So these uh, groups of researchers and also college and universities, um, the computing industry, um, the kindergarten through 12th uh, grade systems and schools, mm -hmm. um, the governments, and also the parents. Okay. Um, so for instance, uh, the recommendations that are associated with uh, the researchers group mm -hmm. includes uh, the first one, um, rather than treating um, underrepresented minorities or women of colors as a homogeneous uh, monolith, okay. computing education researchers should employ authentic, intentional, theoretical, theoretically informed approaches to collecting disaggregated data, which eliminates the complex inter intersectional experiences of and gender-based uh, differences among Black students in undergraduate computing programs. Okay. And uh, the second recommendation that falls into uh, the researchers group is the following. Um, rather than relying exclusively on quantitative data, mm -hmm. researchers should consciously devise qualitative and uh, mixed methods approaches mm -hmm. to foregrounding Black students' per perspectives mm -hmm. on how to reform computing education with mm -hmm. uh, a view towards addressing systemic inequities. Mm -hmm. And the recommendations that uh, are associated with the colleges and universities group include, uh, first, um, academic administrators should take um, urgent steps to improve diversity among, uh, among uh, computing faculty mm -hmm. at your respective institutions with mm -hmm. a particular emphasis on recruiting Black women for tenure track and tenured faculty positions. Right. Um, the, re the other recommendation uh, at the level of uh, the colleges and universities group mm -hmm. is um, that Computing educators should um, critically examine their own prejudices. Um, they should pursue uh, cultural training and uh, commit to developing new pedag 
new pedagogical uh, approaches mm -hmm. to supportively engaging with black students. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, computing departments should establish partnerships with uh, kindergarten through 12th mm -hmm. grade uh, systems and schools to create computing programs which mm -hmm. engage with uh, black students mm -hmm. as well as uh, their families. Mm -hmm. To continue this important research, what is your advice to researchers? Um, so, um, despite having um, been carried out in accordance with uh, a systematic methodology, our, our systematic mapping study um, is also associated with uh, a few limitations. Um, for instance, uh, as a resource of our methodology called a phasis on empirical specificity, we intentionally uh, excluded studies which uh, learn Black uh, students together with uh, students from on the represented backgrounds more generally. Um, we also grouped uh, Black students, uh, we also excluded uh, uh, studies that grouped Black students in undergraduate computing programs with uh, Black students in other STEM fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also excluded studies that took a deficit-based approach to framing or mm -hmm. addressing the underrepresentation of uh, Black students in uh, computing. And as a result of our decision to focus solely on the studies that are concerned principally with uh, Black students, mm -hmm. we may have missed um, some important insights from studies involving not just Black students, but also students who are racialized, gendered, or minoritized more uh, generally. And um, along similar lines, our emphasis on undergraduate computing education means that uh, we may have missed out on insights offered by studies mm -hmm. concerned only with Black students in graduate schools or mm -hmm. kindergarten through 12th uh, grade computing education contests. Mm -hmm. okay. And as a consequence, it is possible that um, the persistence factors and recommendations identified in our paper are incomplete. And for this reason, future mapping studies should consider taking a similar approach to identifying persistence factors and uh, recommendations in both kindergarten through 12th grade and also graduate computing education contests. And, and when it comes to future research directions, it is important to remind that uh, when carrying out our study or systematic mapping study, okay. we identified a total of 16 empirical studies, um, mm -hmm. including qualitative, uh, quantitative, and mixed method studies mm -hmm. informed by a range of theoretical frameworks. Okay. And um, considered together, these studies reveal that uh, Black students leverage various forms of social capital and uh, employ a range of uh, persistence, coping, or survival strategies to succeed in undergraduate computing programs, despite the ongoing experience of systemic uh, anti-Black racism. Mm -hmm. um, crucially, however, these persistence strategies only permit Black students to persist, but mm -hmm. uh, not thrive in undergraduate computing programs. Mm -hmm. um, so in accordance with um, our findings, with our um, observations, mm -hmm. we contend that more needs to be done to address the systemic inequities faced by uh, Black people uh, in general and Black women in particular mm -hmm. in computing programs and professions. Mm -hmm. And as evidenced by uh, the small number of primary studies captured by our systematic by our systematic uh, mapping study, mm -hmm. there exists an urgent need for additional asset-based empirical studies mm -hmm. involving Black students in uh, computing. Mm -hmm. And in addition to foregrounding the intersectional experiences of Black women in computing, future studies should also attend to the currently understudied experiences of uh, Black men in uh, computing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time, Alvin. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much.